my whole goal was to just get into shape for this. So I'm Jacob Williamson, I'm from Logansport, Indiana. The house that my dad lives in currently, which is the, you know, the farm home, used to be an airport. It was run by, I think, like my great grandpa or something like that. Of course, we have a local airport that same grandpa was the manager of, and then my uncle became the manager of it. And he used to actually give lessons to like the family, offered lessons to anyone who wanted to fly. I personally don't have any experience with flying whatsoever. I've seen it around me, you know, I live in Amoa, so I see a whole bunch of planes flying around. I'm always looking up like, oh, what are they doing? you know, seeing them dog fighting and fake dog fighting and whatever. I don't have any experience myself other than, you know, this trip, but I've always wanted to do it. And my biggest issue was weight. I couldn't do this because I was too heavy. Um, and I kept saying next year, next year, next year. And there was a graduation party for someone that was a, a family friend and I went to it and they just had a scale. So uh, I stepped on it. I hadn't weighed myself in probably like 10 years. And I saw myself to be 297 pounds. And I was almost at 300 pounds. And I was like, oh man, like I can't. I gotta stop this, I gotta change it. The very first thing I did is I uh, dropped soda and I lost 20 pounds like that, literally in like two months, 10 pounds a month. Once I dropped that 20 pounds, I was like, oh, maybe I can do the aviator thing again. Many years ago when I checked, the weight limit was actually 250 and I was, I think, 270 at the time. And I was back to about 270, so I checked again just to make sure and now it was 300. And I signed up literally immediately. As soon as I saw that I was at 270, I signed up immediately. And that was many, many months ago. You know, finally that next year happened this year, you know, I lost a whole bunch of weight and I was like, I'm gonna get up in the air. You know, it's in my family and you know, it was time. Two inches of left and hold. Very nice. Fletchy's all you. All right, guys, welcome to the Aviator Show. My name's Chris Byler. I'm an instructor here at Aviator Paramotor. Right now we've got a class. They're wrapping up here out last day tomorrow morning for students. So they went from not being able to kite at all to now they're pretty much all launching, landing on their own, getting into some sweet touch and goes. I'm feeling good. The sun is shining. I knew it would. The world's a playground. I'm in the clouds. Let me show you what it's all about. Check it out. My name is Jason Fix. I have flown fixed wing planes for a little while now and got excited about having a little more open air around me. So decided to come out to Aviator and try the, the freest way of flight. I actually had no idea it existed until I was cruising along the beach in a Cessna and was like, this would be so much cooler with nothing around me. And then Googled it and figured out, hey, Aviator's right down the road. It's an hour and a half away. Let's go there and try this. Hold the maze, hold the maze, release, adding a little bit of power as you go, okay? Lean back, run. Okay, 
Nice deep breath, check all your gear, carabiners. Everything looks good, wind looks good. I, I think the biggest surprise for me anyways is the oscillation. It's a finesse feeling and I'm I'm a locked in person, so that finesse feeling is it's kinda harder for me to get, but that is probably the biggest challenge for me up to this point is is getting that wing not to go and just be comfortable with it. You gotta be comfortable and relax and I'm I'm getting there. So let's go around. Power up, power up, power up. You made that commitment, then you got all shitty. Nice and level, straight flight. Get in your seat. There you go. So set up your nice approach. Just the weight of your hands, nice and relaxed. And I want you over this nice grasp. Oh, not too tight. Nice and steady, nice and steady. Go straight, go straight, go straight, go straight. Get it over this nice piece of steady grasp. Come on to idle, come to idle. Let it settle, let it settle, let it settle. Wait, wait, pressure, 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 all the way. Oh, oh, kill the motor, kill, oh, pa power, 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 power. The tunnel vision is still there. I mean, it's majority gone, but getting off the ground, tunnel vision's gone. Flying, tunnel vision's gone. Coming into land, I'm still not quite, quite there yet, but um, Hopefully it, it continues on the path where it's like, okay, tunnel vision just slowly dissipates throughout. Okay, gently start adding some power now to go straight and level. A little bit more wind, so you have to actually fly that wing. Stop that oscillation, so we feel that wing, we hold that little bit of right or a little bit of left, wherever we need to do. There we go, nice and straight like that. There we go. Now let's get out of the seat. One inch of left, but... One inch left. Go around again. Go around again. You're oscillating like a roller coaster. Not necessarily advice for the company. I, I would say everything is good. I would say advice for anybody else. I definitely thought about self-training, which I am extremely glad I did not do because it would have been me that bought the gear and tried to give it a run and I would have screwed myself. Probably would have given it up after day one. Come over to your left a little bit. Swing it out to your left. Swing it out to your left. Not too hot. Inch, an inch. Now turn and face me. One inch right. One inch right. There you go. Let's get out the seat gently. Get out the seat gently. There we go. Now smoothly come off the power. Smoothly come off the power. There we go. Let it fly. Let it fly. Kill the motor. Kill the motor. Hands up. Lean forward. Ready to run. Wait. Pressure, 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 pressure. Hold it, hold it. All the way. Boop. There you go. Turn and just kite. Just turn and kite. Turn and kite. Having the instructors and having Aviator there to support and, and the consistent training. It's like training on this for a weekend for 10 weeks would just be exhausting and I don't think you would quite catch the hang of it. I think all of us here are, are pretty decent pilots at this point because of the consistent training. So don't do not do the weekend warrior stuff. Go, go full in and get her done. My name's Ryan, I'm from uh, Hudson, New Hampshire. I currently don't have any experience in aviation right now. This is my first time getting a touch of being in the sky and uh, this was one hell of an experience for me, for sure. I go to the gym, typical. Uh, I like to mountain bike. I love hiking, going outside. I like most things, just being outside snowboarding. I had always wanted to fly in some capacity. I did want to be a pilot when I was younger. I found another passion. I work in IT now, but like most people, I saw Tucker Gott's videos and, and then from there I was like, man, that is just the coolest thing ever. And then from that point, I just kept watching them. Everyone that came up and like some other guys that I was seeing too, I was watching all their videos and I was like, man, it's just the coolest thing. They were talking about different uh, places to go training. They're talking about like cost of entry and things like that. It was the cheapest way to get yourself in the sky. This was the first step to do that and I'm young enough to where I know I don't want to pass up on opportunities that I'm going to regret later on and this was my chance to get my foot in the door in the aviation world and I have zero regrets.
looking good. Once you're comfortable, get yourself in your seat. Fly to the south over the cow pastures and stuff. Just keep your head on a swivel, looking for other pilots, other paramotors. It's taking off right now. The second you see him on the move, you can be on the move. Just, you know. Awesome launch. Same thing, get up there, get that nice comfortable altitude, get yourself in your seat, and then just make sure we're keeping our head on the swivel, looking for those trikes that are up there, and then uh, those other guys that were out there. Okay, We've got three wings in the air heading this way, looks like. I'm gonna be the slowest of the bunch, so it doesn't look like I'll really be able to keep up with them, but we'll get to hang out for a little bit. Absolutely have to be open to input and when they tell you something that you do it wrong, you have to really do your best to kind of analyze that. Earlier in my training I was having some trouble getting the wing up smoothly and it was just as simple as like my arms were up here, lowered them down here, different technique with the A's and letting them go at the proper time and dialed that in and coming together all smoothly. So as things progress it's just what's the next thing to kind of work on and focus on and and really uh, dial in. You see, kill the motor, lean forward, this is all you on your pressures okay so wait. You just met. No don't get upset that was really nice you just didn't go all the way down. We're obviously not there only a couple hours of flight total in the grand scheme of things so I know there's plenty to learn still and I know that that process isn't going to stop ever. It's all just focusing on like what can what you can do better so you can stay safe up there, have fun and basically live it up. This has just been one of the best experiences of my life. It was one of those uh, situations where I was definitely putting myself out of my comfort zone but I think it's good for everybody to do that from time to time with whatever that might be. That might be something different for every person but this was definitely something for me like going on a trip by myself and doing something like I said before no aviation experience so you know didn't didn't really know what to expect aside from I was most likely gonna have one hell of a time and um, lived up to everything.